It's Madden NFL 22, and we've got a showdown in the AFC West. It's the Chargers and the Raiders coming up next. NFL football has come to Southern Nevada as we are in the menacing new Allegiant Stadium here in Las Vegas. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Las Vegas Raiders. And we are underway here in Las Vegas. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. So here's the Charger offense making their way out. And we get a glance here at their leader. The man will be calling the plays under center. What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give him a better chance to lead the team to wins. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Well, he's going to take a shot right away. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that would be the last shot that they take in this game. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. He'll look to throw. This one caught by Winslow. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And the Raiders have got him. Calling a loss of five, a bit sacked to bring up third down. This is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. shot able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. On is the Chargers punter now. 
As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. So here comes the Raiders offense now onto the field. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way, and he sees himself in an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that, and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator say right off the top, he's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. On first down, Wheatley, and he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards, second down coming up. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Looking to throw. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Thrown back across his body. Picked off at the 23. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. So, CD, his very first pass of the afternoon intercepted. And I know that's a major surprise for any quarterback because, look, let's face it, no one thinks about throwing interceptions. But think about all the warm-up that we saw, right? Every pass he threw wasn't a single interception because, oh, that's right, there were no defenders out there. A little bit different when there's live guys out there chasing the football. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. They'll run on first down. Means. Just a yard on the pick up there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. They'll set up a throw. And that is caught. It's Winslow. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big game that time for the Chargers. You asked tight ends about their favorite routes to run, and surprisingly, this will pop up as one of their staples because they run so many routes in the middle of the field. How about this one? Starts downfield, bends it to the corner, great touch on the football, and they turn that one into a big play. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. On first down, Means, and he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. That call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll set up to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Chandler. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Here we go now on first and goal. And he'll give it here to his running back.
Charger football to start quarter number two. As they come up now, second and goal. scoreboard here this afternoon. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Now the extra point try forthcoming. And the Chargers grab the 7 0 lead. That time, a six play drive. And it ends with a one yard touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Taking it about the one. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Now on the return here, we've got an injured player down there. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. The Las Vegas offense ready to start this next drive. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. But their hope is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. He'll look to throw. That's caught out left side by Casper. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. And he's going to have the Raiders first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there. On third and one. That's a tremendous group back right there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones, talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. And to give this time to the tailback. He'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second and six. He'll drop to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Jackson. And as a quarterback, you're always pleased when you can use all the weapons at your disposal. Here he spots his fullback underneath, gets the completion right there for a nice pickup. So 
after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. They'll try the left side. Wheatley. And he's able to get this one down to the 40 yard line. That's a nice run right there. Able to get to the outside. And so many times, defense is like, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. They'll run on first down. Wheatley, and he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football and picked up by the Chargers. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. Now a throw here, hold in. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. Second and ten. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he will find Winslow. That's complete. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts yeah, yeah. as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. throw again looking left sideline incomplete they've given up a few first downs on this drive but getting the incompletion there that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide
after the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Back to throw again. Going for it all. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. There is something to a game plan when trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. Back to throw here. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And this will be caught in the end zone for a Chargers touchdown. A great effort there. 26 yards. And the Chargers are going to add on to their lead. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Extra point splits the uprights, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. So that drive goes eight plays, and it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. And the Raider offense heading back for one final first-half drive. And they've got less than 30 seconds to go here, so not a lot of time to work with. seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and ten. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he will find his man on the end round. Complete. And that's good for a pickup of ten yards. And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. They'll throw now on the final play. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. So we have reached halftime. Intermission with the visiting Chargers on top. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Chargers in that first half. And their offense has been in top form so far, especially their passing game, as it's helped push them out to this big halftime lead. Meanwhile, for the Raiders, we check on their numbers on the ground in the first half, as they know they'll need to be better to overcome this halftime deficit. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. are going to have it first and they trail here as we get back to it in this third quarter of action 
From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's going to let this one go deep. Throw it across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked on by Casey Hayward. And the Chargers are going to take over here up near the 40. But that one is going to sting. First play of the third quarter and a turnover. And you have to know that at halftime, they spent a lot of time going through their checklist of what they wanted to accomplish to start this third quarter. Turning it over like this was not on that list. Not at all. You, and you come out of the locker room trailing, so that first drive to establish momentum is very key. Crucial. Chargers in good field position to start out. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll drop to throw. They will find Winslow on the left side complete. Three yards the gain there, second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. On second down, Means. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. He's across midfield to the 49. Getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. Some extra space following the display of power. Down just inside the 45. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Working with a second and four. They'll look to throw here. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Short completion, just four yards. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Chandler. And he is going to have the Chargers first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. 
They'll keep it on the ground. Means. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. And down he goes, brought down a Raiders sack. They dial up the corner blitz that time, and it delivers to the two of a nine-yard loss. They found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. But they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. So on trots the field goal unit, and wow, this is going to be a challenge here. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt, and he missed it. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, they'll be disappointed with that effort. offense now making their way back out onto the field and last time one play interception so this offense they should be fresh <laughs> that's a good way of putting it and i can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception a lot of people think the very next time out run the football don't give them a chance maybe play action i think maybe you go play action show your quarterback get a little confidence in him and let him fling another one That catch good for only a couple. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Final minute now of the third quarter. On second down now, Wheatley. And he'll be close to a first down at the Chargers 41. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Hey, we got a seal, we got a seal, we got a seal. They'll keep it on the ground. Wheatley, and this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Three quarters in the books. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Las Vegas. Welcome back, everybody. It's Raider football here, but they're on the short side of the scoreboard right now as we begin the fourth. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Oh, Brown, a nice catch. And he is out of bounds, but not before. He's inside the 30. Good yardage on the completion there. When they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. They'll look to throw now on first down. And he's got his big tight end here. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Two 
Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now back to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But I think the Raiders are going to be able to hold on to it. Yes. Fortunate to get that football back. Because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity. Because it could have been lost there. Their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. Very fortunate to get another shot. Here's second and goal. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll be stopped up at the line of scrimmage with a flag down. Let's check on the goal. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. The yards marched off as they'll try again on second and goal. They'll look to throw. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Casey Hayward. And the Chargers are going to take over once again. With a football at their own 20 yard line. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. The Chargers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. They have to like the position that they are in. Fourth quarter, two-score lead, and now the ball back after the INT. They go play action here on first down. He's got his man on the crossing round. And he'll be out of Let's bounds, go. but able to get it up past the 45. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and, and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Plenty of shouts from this crowd as they watch the replay. They want to challenge and they're going to get one. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Let's go, boys. Bring it So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. They'll look to throw here on first down. Middle of the field to Jefferson. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Back to throw now on first down. Throw right side caught by Winslow. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. 
On first down, Means, and not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time, he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is, he takes care of the ball well for them, so they keep handing it to him. They'll keep it on the ground. Means. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20-yard line. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time, the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself, and that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. On third down, Means. And he'll be brought down with the first down after a gain of about 11 as that takes us to the two-minute warning. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Second and goal from the one. They'll try to run this one in. And that play's not going to get him in as he stopped right at about the line of scrimmage. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. They'll try to run this one in. That'll bring up fourth. They had the eight-yard gain on first down, but unable to do much from there. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now, what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. This is an old-fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. And I want some type of a play where my quarterback has a chance to run it or throw it. I don't just want one static play. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This to make it a three-score game late. And his kick is indeed good. And the lead will grow. It's now 17-0. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. And now here come the Raiders. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. You got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. Joey Bosa, credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. 
In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And picked up by the Chargers. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. Go partner, I think it's safe to say they can mark this down as extremely frustrating. Here we are in the fourth quarter, and that last play, that turnover, I think it epitomizes what happened to them all day on offense. So symbolic, and that's why they're still being shut out. L.A. readies for its next possession. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. Victory formation time for the Chargers. They take it in. Well, that's the play you work on each and every week. Your offense taking a knee at the end means you've won the ball game. But how about the defensive effort? A shutout, pitching a shutout. They're going to feel great about themselves. They're going to feel really great about themselves. A big goose egg on the scoreboard. Nice job defensively. Yeah, I say dinner on the defensive coordinator tonight. So this one's over. It's in the win column for the L.A. Chargers, and they did it in shutout fashion. Impressive. Would it be too bland of a statement to say they didn't have the greatest day offensively? Not, I mean, you Did know, enough, though. Did enough. But, yeah, you're right. Most games, it wouldn't have been enough. So they've got to go into the locker room and applaud their defensive mates and say, guys, you really carried us today. We'll try and get you back next time. But as for today, you guys were nails out there.